السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي يجيبني حين أناديه ويستر علي كل عوة وأنا أعصيه ويعظم النعمة علي فلا أجازيه نحمده ونسبحه ونقدس على آلائه ونعمائه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إلها واحدا أحدا فردا صمدا قيوما نؤمن له بالربوبية ونقر له بالعبودية من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وترحم على محمد وآل محمد كأفضل ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم وسلم على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين والأوصياء والصديقين وعترة نبيك الطيبين الطاهرين المحصومين وأصحابه المنتجبين ومن تبعهم بإحسان وإيمان إلى يوم الدين عباد الله أوصيكم وأوصي نفسي بتقوى الله ولزوم أمره أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصمح ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكرون صدق الله العلي العظيم For fasting and for the month of Ramadan there are numerous benefits but the prime benefit the most important benefit of this month, of the process of fasting during this month is mentioned in verse 185 in Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ you may learn self-restraint. Taqwa means self-restraint. And this self-restraint is also self-imposed by us. We refrain from this month from certain sensual benefits and pleasures, eating, drinking, relationship with one's spouse, we refrain from them. And this is self-denial. This is not something that has been imposed on us. Sometimes a person is denied drink or food or a relationship as a means of deprivation, as a means of punishment. He or she could not eat, or cannot drink, or cannot meet people because of a punishment, because of deprivation. While in the fasting, it's not a punishment. It is with one's pleasure and one's understanding and one's content and acceptance and satisfaction. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he speaks about fasting, he says, I don't intend to put a burden on you. I don't want to deprive you. It's not about punishment or mere restriction or deprivation. He says, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرِ I intend through fasting every ease for you, every comfort for you, every felicity for you. يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرِ He does not intend for your usr or difficulty. يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرِ But if we understand the meaning of the fast, we're going to enjoy it. Sometimes some people really, they do not enjoy fasting. It's a burden on them. They look at it as a burden. When the month of Ramadan approaches, they don't enjoy that. They say, oh, again, Ramadan, I have to fast, I have... Because they do not really, number one, they do not understand the value, the benefit, the meaning, the merits of fasting. And once someone does not understand these values, he or she would not enjoy fasting. It's like sending someone to school by force. In Muslim countries, they used to send us to school by force. Here in America, I look at my kids, they look forward to the school. They enjoy it. But for us, you know, my generation, during the dark ages, it was a torture going to school. Because the, the first thing you see the teacher early in the morning, he's in a very bad mood, he's angry. How would you like to, would you really enjoy this, you know, going to, you don't enjoy this experience. Here the teachers, they smile. I don't know what they eat that makes them really always smiling. So, a child who does not like a school would not benefit from it. He would not excel. He would not advance. He would not learn. He comes back home empty-handed. And a person who fasts without enjoying the fast would become empty-handed. He would not enjoy the fast because he does not understand it. And therefore, if he does not enjoy it, he would not benefit from it. And the main benefit, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ For self-restraint and self control. It's not a punishment. Yes, during the fast, we may lose few things. We lose the food, the drink, probably the sleep, probably the comfort. It's not an easy process, but then you gain many things instead. And the things that you gain is taqwa, self-control. You find it through fasting. When you try to really squeeze yourself and control yourself against these desires. Through your own will, not the will of someone else. Sometimes a person is a solitary confinement. He or she is denied food or drink for many hours, sometimes many days. That person would not learn piety because he needs the food. They don't give him the food. While you at home, you have the food. It's there at your disposal. You have it. And you have the freedom of going and eating and drinking. But you say to yourself, I'm not going to do that. The food is here next to me. The drink is here next to me. I'm hungry. Probably I'm thirsty. But I'm not going to do that. Submitting to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how we build our characters, our manners. This is how we learn taqwa. Taqwa is when what you desire is right in front of your eyes, but you say to yourself, no, I'm not going to touch it. I'm not going to get close to it. I'm not going to do that. Now, this is how we build the power of resistance because taqwa is about resistance, muqawama. Resisting desires, this is taqwa. When we are able to control our desires, we learn taqwa. 
The Prophet وسلم, emphasizes this point in particular. He says during the month of Ramadan, the right way of fasting is going to improve your akhlaq and your manners. But the wrong way of fasting is going to make you frustrated and angry during the month of Ramadan. The wrong way of fasting. But if you enjoy it, if you go by the rules, if you respect the spirit of fast, the spirit of Ramadan, then you're going to enjoy, you're going to improve your manners. Ayyuhal nas, man hassana minkum fi hadha shahar khuluqahu. Whoever tries to work out on his manners, we have to work out on our manners. The same way we work out on our muscles, our bodies. We need to work out on our manners and akhlaq. Man hassana minkum. Whoever tries to improve his akhlaq and his manners in this month, kana lahu jawazun ala sirat yawma tazillu fihi al -aqdam. On a day where many, many feet are going to slip away from sirat, the bridge that takes you right to paradise, your feet would not slip. You're going to have a safe and smooth passage on this bridge. Without hesitation, you're going to reach your destination. If you restrain your wrongdoing, your evil, your harm, restrain it. Control it. Don't let people get hurt by you. If you if you if you need to send people something, send them something good, not bad. Whether it is a speech, whether it's an action, whether it's a, a thought, send the good things that you have to people and keep the bad things. Don't send them. Woman abstain from har harming and hurting people during this month Allah is going to restrain his wrath against that people so he would not see Allah angry on the day of judgment he will see Allah pleased with him content with him and the Prophet وسلم, continues to say, وَمَنْ أَكْرَمَ فِيهِ يَتِيمًا During this month, if you pay attention to an orphan, a single orphan, you remember a single orphan with goodness, with food, with attention, with a smile. أَكْرَمَهُ اللَّهُ يَوْمَ يَلْقَاهُ Allah will remember you on the day of judgment. On that day that you meet him, he's going to honor you the same way you honored an orphan during this month. وَمَنْ وَصَلَ فِيهِ رَحِمَهُ وَصَلَهَ اللَّهُ بِرَحْمَتِهِ يَوْمَ If you reach out to your next of kin, to your extended family members, we are busy throughout the year. The month of Ramadan is the month of communication. The month that you inquire and ask and send your greetings to your extended family members, to your uncles, to your cousins, to the family that you have in America, outside America. Greeting them, telling them Ramadan Mubarak, may this month be a month of mercy and forgiveness and compassion on you and your family. Reach out to them during this month. Take some time, take some time to reach out to your family members, those that usually you don't get to contact them during this month, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَصَلَهُ اللَّهُ بِرَحْمَتِهِ يَوْمَ يَلْقَهُ Allah is going to reach out to you with His mercy, His mercy on the day that you meet Him. وَمَنْ قَطَعَ فِيهِ رَحِمَهُ A person who chooses not to reach out to his family, he would sever, قَطَع, disconnect himself from his family in this month, Allah would not bestow his mercy on him on the day of judgment. 
تطوع من صلاة النافلة the extra prayers other than the five daily prayers if you offer one of these prayers كتب الله له براءة من النار الله will give him have you seen in this country you have to get sometimes security clearance in order for you to get this sensitive job Allah will give you security clearance against punishment against the hellfire وَمَنْ أَكْثَرَ فِيهِ مِنَ الصَّلَاةِ عَلَيْهِ whoever increases the salat over the prophet whoever always frequently says اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد سقل الله ميزانه يوم تخف فيه الموازي. Your scale is going to be heavy on the day of judgment. A day where other people's scale and ميزان is light, has no عمل in it, empty. Your scale is full of deeds, good deeds because of your صلوات for the Prophet صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم and his family. كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون. We ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to bestow piety, self-restraint, self-control enables us through this journey of the month which one third of it has ended already. I always say the fastest journey in this life trip is the journey of Hajj and the fastest month or season is the month of Ramadan. One third of it is over. Try to take advantage of the rest of this month. Spend some time in the evenings for munajat and dua with your Lord. Only two third of this month has left and this also the, the 20 days that we have they will pass very quick and all of a sudden the month of Ramadan is over. Now the gates of mercy are open. Allah gives concessions. Allah invites us and he gives concession and he wants an excuse for him to forgive us during this month. At the time of iftar, at the time of suhoor, in between, especially the nights of Ramadan. We have to cut back on entertainment. Try to spend some time with your family, teach your children, your family together to worship, to speak to Allah, to recite du'as. We have a plenty of du'as for this month. Let's spend time to nurture ourselves spiritually so we can gain the taqwa, the self-restraint, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wal-asr inna al-insana lafi khusrin illa al-ladhina amanu. Wa-amilu al-salihat. Wa-tawasaw bil-haqqi wa-tawasaw bil-sabr. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ahli baytina al-tayyibina al-tahirin.